We all know that chronic illness has continued to skyrocket year after year, despite in traditional medicine, best efforts in terms of various types of procedures and surgeries and, and medications and drugs that we're throwing at it. And so many of us looking to become more active participants in our healthcare, we're looking for what are these things that we can implement that will massively improve our health. And one of the places to make a big dent would be improving the health of our mitochondria. Dr. Jason Saunders here, and we're gonna go a little bit deeper into mitochondrial health today. I get a lot of questions about the mitochondria, our involvement in hyperbaric oxygen, but also our involvement with red light and nutrition and all the different uh, services that we offer patients or consulting that we offer other businesses. I get a lot of questions about like, where does this affect the mitochondria itself. So just a real quick visit. The mitochondria is one little organelle inside of a cell. So your cell, which is basically the, the smallest unit of life. And then inside that cell, your cell needs to be able to produce energy. And ultimately the mitochondria is the organelle whose job it is, is to produce energy. And we talked in a previous video about the mitochondria literally being the engine of the cell, the part of the cell that brings fuel and oxygen in to help create that, that energy. And so uh, today we're gonna talk a little bit more in depth with exactly, not only for hyperbaric oxygen, but there's a lot of modalities that we're using to really try to improve our health, our performance, our longevity, our quality of life. And so ultimately we wanna talk about what are those tools to some extent, but also uh, not just what are those tools, but where do those tools actually influence uh, mitochondrial health? Picture, we're going into that cell, Right, we're going through the cell, now we're finding the mitochondria and we're getting into that mitochondria. We're gonna slice that mitochondria open and start showing you that there's different layers inside the mitochondria. And so some of our energy production happens right outside the mitochondria. It's called glycolysis and it's a very inefficient way of making energy, but under low oxygen environments, our cells are able to still make energy, at least in the short term. Now. One of the issues when we talk about chronic illness, but particularly cancer, and we talk about these dysfunctional mitochondria inside the cells, and then, then cells can't use oxygen to make energy. And what they do instead, they start to ferment lactose. And as they ferment that, they can continue making energy, but again, very inefficiently, and they'll need lots and lots of glucose in order to ferment the glucose into lactose, and then ultimately um, to make energy from that. But in a healthy cell and in a cell that's relatively healthy and we're really trying to upregulate the performance, we have all these tools, sauna, red light, nutrition, hyperbaric oxygen, uh, PEMF. Where do all of these tools fit inside of, you know, cellular function and cellular performance? Let's talk a little bit about that. So as the, as the fuel comes into your body, let's say either carbohydrate or fat source you're choosing to eat, we start breaking it down and breaking it down into its most simple parts. And then once we can get some of its most simple parts into the cell, let's say in the form of glucose or fatty acids, right? So um, carbohydrates will turn into glucose, that'll enter the cell. Fats will turn into fatty acids and those can enter the cell. They can go through different stages of breakdown in order to help create energy for us. And inside the mitochondria, once they get in, there's two main processes they go through. One is called the Krebs cycle, and the other one's called the electron transport chain. In the Krebs cycle, what it's doing is basically breaking down the carbon and hydrogen bonds, releasing carbon dioxide as a waste product, and then ultimately creating NAD as the ingredient that's gonna go into the electron transport chain to allow for uh, energy production. And then inside the electron transport chain, it's exactly what it sounds like, an electron transport chain. So this NAD is donating electrons, energy rich. NAD has a lot of energy to it, a lot of electrons that it can just send off. So NAD comes into the electron transport chain, it donates those electrons, and then those electrons go down a path of donating one step to the next, one step to the next. Ultimately, the last electron acceptor is oxygen. And that's why oxygen plays such a critical role in um, ATP and energy production. So if we go through Krebs and now we're getting into these smaller molecules, these NAD molecules, and now we're gonna go into the actual electron transport chain. And, and here's just a very, very simple depiction of one little section of an electron transport chain. All the names are not that important. We're not gonna go into all the details, but 
If you look, you'll see three larger blue molecules, okay? And those are stationary. And then in between the first and third, you'll see a, a smaller one, and that's a mobile electron uh, carrier. And then also in between the third and the fourth, you'll see another electron, um, a smaller mobile carrier. And so those two smaller mobile carriers are taking electrons from complex one, passing it to complex three, from one to three, it's, right? That's the electron transport chain is, that's how they pass from one to the next. And then the other one is called cytochrome C, that passes it from you know um, station three to station four. And as long as we can keep moving electrons down this gradient, we can keep the factory of ATP open, thriving and doing well. But there are multiple locations where this can become hindered or slowed down or, or potentially even stop. So number one, we need the right ingredients coming into the system. And primarily that's NAD. We all know that through supplementation, there are some NAD precursors like NMR or NR that we can start to utilize to upregulate the amount of that ingredient going into the electron transport chain. So now we're dumping in some excess raw materials. So right away through nutrition or through IV nutrition, we can up the amount of raw material, NAD, that's going into the electron transport chain in the first place. The next one is the first mobile carrier, the first carrier that's gonna take electrons from complex one and move it to complex three. And that complex is actually called ubiquinol. And if you don't know what ubiquinol is, it's CoQ10. And so having normal and appropriate levels of CoQ10 inside the cell is necessary, it's mandatory, in order to have that electron carrier moving the electrons from step one to step two. The next place that we can intervene is a, the next mobile carrier, which is called cytochrome C. For those of you that are familiar with cytochrome C, it's a chromophore. It means that it's a molecule that's very sensitive to light. And it happens to be very sensitive to certain frequencies of red light. So if you've either used it yourself or read about it, red light therapy, infrared, near infrared, these are all frequencies of red light. And they have a lot of effects in our body, but one of their major effects and one of their benefits for chronic illness is stimulating cytochrome C. So when we basically shine the right frequencies of red light, it stimulates cytochrome C, just like ubiquinol, CoQ10, needs to transfer electrons, cytochrome C needs to transfer electrons. And when we stimulate cytochrome C, we can get it moving back and forth in a really fast and healthy way to make sure that those electrons are moving down the right path. And then the last place we can intervene is when we then donate those last electrons to oxygen. And when we donate the last electrons to oxygen and we mix it with some hydrogen, that's where we can make water. But ultimately, as long as we can keep passing those electrons and oxygen's there to accept it, we can keep that entire pathway moving. As long as we can keep that entire pathway moving, what we're really doing is we're creating a huge hydrogen gradient. And that hydrogen gradient is what turns the mechanisms inside the mitochondria that make ATP. Lastly, what I would say is PEMF. And so all of our membranes, all of our cellular membranes have an electrical potential. And when that electrical potential is very healthy, our membranes are able to communicate from cell to cell. Our membranes are able to accept molecules, hormones, um, vitamins. Our cell membranes are able to accept these to our receptors and transport things inside or back out of our cells when, when they need to. And that electrical gradient is critical for normal cell function. And PEMF is one of those tools that has an amazing ability to help stabilize and maintain healthy electrical impulses and electrical balance of our cell membranes, of our nervous system. And so that's where that piece fits in. So just as a quick summary and a quick video, you know, from NAD to CoQ10 to red light, to hyperbaric oxygen, to PEMF, all of these tools can interact in a really positive way to make sure that our mitochondria are operating optimally. Now, that's not to say that you do all of these things every day or you know, you could overdo these modalities too. So it's important that once you understand this and where they, you know, where they all kind of come together, then you can start to come up with a plan of, well, which ones do you need more? Which ones do I need more? How often should you be doing one of these modalities versus another? So there are other clinical layers to this, but in this video, I just wanted to give you a quick depiction of exactly where some of these actually influence the cell specifically inside the mitochondria. Thanks again. I hope that helped answer some of the questions for those of you that wanted to know more about mitochondrial function as it relates to all of these wonderful modalities that we've uh, 
uh, implemented into our health strategy. See you next time.